Hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works, and today what I'm going to be working on is a Dometic, what is this thing, a 3862 refrigerator. Now it's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, I wanted to do a video on how to diagnose troubleshoot a refrigerator that works on LP but does not work on electric. And what are some things we could look at if it's, if you, if it's not working on electric? So if that's your situation, one thing you can pretty much eliminate is a thermistor because a thermistor is, is kind of like a general purpose input coming in, feeding that control board, and that will then communicate to the board an ohm's value of what the fin temperature is, what it, what it thinks the refrigerator is on the inside cooling food compartment area. So if you're working on LP and it's working fine, well, that pretty much eliminates the problem being a thermistor. It does not eliminate the control board. And we're gonna go a little bit deeper into some things that you could look at if it was not working on electricity. What's the most obvious thing? Come on, you're not plugged into shore power or maybe your circuit breaker's off. So let's do some of those simple things first. But let's say that you know that you're plugged into shore power because your microwave's working. And let's say that um, you're not, you haven't blown a, a circuit breaker or it, all that's good. And uh, you've done that. And maybe even you've come out here and you've plugged in like a hairdryer or a lamp to this receptacle and you know that the receptacle is good. So then what do you do? Well, that's kind of where I want to pick up. I want to pick up from the part where you've already verified that you have power to this plug right here. Let me take you the next step in and start diving a little bit deeper. Um, there's a few things that I'm going to have you look at when we get in there. So let's, let me bring you a little bit closer and bring you inside and show you how we're going to determine what possibly might be the problem. Okay, so your refrigerator is not working on electric, but it's working on LP. Okay, now these, what, the, what we have here, this is the heating element right here. This device is a part that's going to glow red hot, uh, and he's going to heat up the boiler. This is the boiler part. I'll do another video on how all these things work, but we're just focusing this video on why the refrigerator is not working on AC. Okay. Um, so if you're telling me, Darren, my refrigerator is not working on AC, well, then what we know is that you're plugged into 120 at this point right here, and you're not getting it here. Now, we're going to make sure that our refrigerator is set in auto mode or locked into AC mode. Obviously, those are some simple things, low hanging fruit type troubleshooting. So I'm going to assume that your refrigerator is in either auto mode or locked into electric mode. So it's either AU or AC. And then I'm gonna assume that you have checked for power on your receptacle. So I'm gonna take you from there in, inward, okay? Now we don't need to talk about this reset right here. We don't need to talk about the thermal fuse down below because if either of these two devices, if this was tripped because it got too hot or this was tripped down here, then he wouldn't work on LP either. So the fact that he's working on LP in this instance I know that this has not tripped, and I know that this thermal fuse in the back has not tripped. Now, there is a panel that goes over the front. It's, a, it's an aftermarket. It's not an aftermarket. I'm sorry. It's a recall kit, um, and I've taken that off so we can see inside. So we need to go inside of this control board. Now, there are uh, a couple different types of control boards. This one, Phillips screw on the top, screwdriver on the bottom. You pry your little arms out, and it comes right off. So we're going to take a Phillips screwdriver. Okay. And just take a flat blade and stick them right in here. And you'll see he'll just pop right off there. And you'll see these little tabs here and here. And the screw, that's what's holding this type of cover on. Okay. There are some other styles with screws opposite each other, but uh, that's what this one's like. Now, to do any further diagnosis, you are going to need a meter. Now, your meter should be able to read AC amperage and AC voltage. Um, something not unlike this meter here. Uh, most of the ones that do the AC amperage will have a clamp on part on the top. Uh, for this particular one, we just need to worry about the AC amperage. But if you're going to get a meter for your RV, what I'm gonna highly recommend you get is one that'll read AC amperage and DC amperage. So AC and DC voltage, AC and DC amperage. I like this one because I can read some other features too, but I'm not gonna get into that on this video. Um, so let me put him here. I wanna make sure you can see him without a glare. Okay, okay, that looks good right there. Now, 
what am I going to be referencing? So the meter comes with a red lead and a black lead. Well, what am I going to be referencing on these things? So here's my two leads. This pin down here is the ground pin or the ground lug where all the grounds for this refrigerator come to this one point. I've actually done some service calls before and what we found was that this was loose, causing some intermittency in the operation of the refrigerator. So I'm going to reference that pin. I don't know if I can get them on there. Therefore, my meter is now talking to the same ground that all the other pins are talking to. Now we're plugged in, we've confirmed. See, I got 120 volts. So I'm, I'm just, I'm checking the receptacle. Now, when this AC wire comes in, it comes in the black and the white. So we have 120 coming in. How do we know that? Well, I'm going to check one side of my fuse. There I have 120. I'm checking one side of my glass fuse. Let's check the other side of the glass fuse, 120. But that right there could have been the problem. The fuse could have blown. Okay. So by using a meter, referencing the same ground, I have 120 on the on one side of my fuse and I have 120 on the other side of my fuse. Okay. So it's not the fuse, but that could have been the problem right there. Um, the other thing it could have been is, uh, let us say, let us say, let's say that um, my refrigerator is in auto mode and it's it's calling to cool. Okay, um, don't make the mistake I did when I was just starting out, and I'm trying to figure out these refrigerators why it's not working in cooling mode. But the problem was he was satisfied. He was at 37 to 40 degrees, and he was happy. There's no reason for him to start his boiler. So if that's the case, open the door for just a quick minute or so, not even that long, to get the boiler to kick off. Uh, so that's the other thing. You do need to troubleshoot this thing when the refrigerator is actively calling for cooling. Um, if it's been working on LP and you're trying to troubleshoot on an AC, but the LP has satisfied the, the food compartment, well, we need to get the boiler to kick on, is my point. So that's, that's another little gotcha that you might run into on troubleshooting these things. So we verified that our fuse is good on both sides. Now, this... Let me, let me move my meter. This is the heating element, okay? Follow the black wires and they're gonna come up to the board. On this board, uh, they're gonna come up right here. There are two black wires. Some of your heating elements might have a black and a yellow. And um, some of you might have refrigerators with dual heating elements. You would see those on your double doors, okay? Um, now, if, let me, let me do one thing here. I'm gonna get a little, little tool. I like this little tool. It's got the little right angle hook on it. It's probably one of my cheapest tools, but I love it. Now, what I'm going to do is I like to use this tool. I don't pull on the connectors. I like to get behind them and, and pry them off, okay? And that's healthier. Uh, so I'm going to unplug this from AC. Okay. Now I've taken away my AC, and I'm going to take the heating elements off. So I'm just going to hook in behind here. See, that was easy. There, so I've just popped off both of my heating elements by grabbing behind them and just prying them off. And that way I'm not pulling them. See, he's trying to start on LP right now. We don't want him to do that. Uh, he, it's fine, he'll, he'll, he'll try. He won't start because I got the LP off. But um, I'm gonna plug him back on AC. So I've got him back on AC. He's gonna realize that in just a moment and he'll stop trying to start on gas. There he goes, he's back on AC again. So now, Using the same meter, now what I want to do, and here's, here's a lot of people will just put a new board on, and that may or may not be the correct answer. Um, so we're going to use a plus and minus, and um, on this particular board, it's a J7, J8. What I need to do is I need to verify that I've got 120 coming out of these pins right here. Uh, so on this particular instance, there's my 120 coming out of the control board. Now let's say my refrigerator is on automatic, it has electricity. It's trying to cool itself. It's trying to get its boiler to, to boil. Okay, we're having a distillery going on back here. We're trying to distill the water out of the ammonia. And I know that I'm trying to heat on AC, but it won't. And we have verified that we have 120 through our fuse, but I do not have 120 volts on these two pins down here. Okay. Um, then what that would indicate is that the control board's bad because this relay right here, this big black thing, that's a relay. The relay will have faulted or failed or seized or corroded or any number of things. These RVs are exposed to all kinds of stuff. So that is when I might say the control board's bad. When I have 120 coming in, it's making it through my fuse. 
And I know that my refrigerator is trying to cool on AC, but I do not have it on these pins. Only at that point would I make the call that it's looking really suspicious that this control board's bad. Okay. The next thing it could be is a heating element. So we're going to test this heating element and we're going to use Ohm's law, where if you know two things, you can solve the third. Um, so how do you know if your heating element's bad? Well, we're going to use Ohm's law on that. Um, so this particular refrigerator, what you're going to need to know to determine your heating element wattage and everything is you're going to, you're going to need the manual for your refrigerator. Um, there have even been instances where I've been called in to work on refrigerators and I've diagnosed the heating element and lo and behold, a previous place had worked on it and it was the wrong size heating element. It wasn't even close. Half the wattage, it, it was, and that was a problem. So, you know, they put a heating element in, heating element in and it's not the right one. Um, so what I like to do is go to the manual of this refrigerator and, um, uh, what am I trying to say? What's the spec? Okay. On this particular one, I've got my notes here. Okay. This refrigerator might be different than yours, but this refrigerator takes a 325 watt um, heating element and it's going to cons uh, 44 ohms of resistance is what we've got here. So uh, 120 volts, 325 watts, 44 ohms of resistance. Now, where do I get that from? I got that right out of the manual. Um, if you're having trouble finding manuals, then on our website, myrvworks.com, we have a resources tab. On the resources tab, we have a, I think we call it a manual library or service manual library. Uh, that is a resource that's available to you. You can go to myrvworks.com, navigate over, go to refrigerators, filter by Dometic, and pull up your refrigerator. And we've got service manuals on there that might help you determine pieces, parts, part numbers, troubleshooting, all that kind of stuff. And that's exactly what I did on here. I pulled up the service manual for this refrigerator, 3826. It's an old Americana Royale, uh, A A E S, I believe. And um, found the page for the heating element. It tells me 325 watts, 44 ohms. So there you go. So what I'm gonna do on this meter, I'm gonna put them on ohms, which is this horseshoe looking indicator, okay? The omega. And I'm gonna stick one meter. Now, polarity does not matter on here. It's usually good to stick them in the backside um, if you can, I'm not a fan of sticking the meter in the side that um, touches. So if you can always get it on the back side, that's always the best way to check these things. So we're going to try to go on the back. And here you see I have 42.4 ohms. So we are totally within spec. They give you a 10% plus or minus value there. So this heating element is, is fine, um, but it could have been wrong. OK, I could have had an ohms value that was either greater than or less than or, or just totally open because it's failed. So it could have been the fuse, could have been the control board because relay stuck and I'm not getting 120 down here. Could have been the heating element. And those would be the ways that, that you would verify to check to diagnose if your refrigerator was having issues on on AC. So we're going to plug you back in. On this heating element, polarity does not matter. On the ones that are yellow and black, I like to put the yellow on plus and the black on minus. I think that's correct. So you turn on gas, we're gonna plug them back in. And um, here's a cool trick. So let's say that we found out that uh, our heating element was bad. And I'm gonna do another video on how to swap out the heating element. But let's just say that that's what we determined, that our heating element was bad. And we just went ahead and swapped out our heating element. Now I want you to watch this. Well, here, let me, let me show you that again. Let me, unplug this because I wanted you to see something. Now I'm on amperage. I'm going to read the amperage going through the wire. So now I'm trying to start on gas. Again, I've got the LP off on this RV and I'm going to plug it, plug the refrigerator in. As soon as this thing stops trying to ignite, I don't know if you can hear that. There you go. He clicked over and now we're seeing amperage going through this heating element. Therefore, we know that there's 44 ohms here. The heating element will start glowing and we'll try to get to, I believe it's around 360 degrees on this um, right here. Um, so there you go. I hope that was helpful. Uh, it could either be shore power is wrong, fuse is blown, card's bad because the relay's stuck. You know to check it down here where your heating elements connect, or it could be your heating element that uh, has failed. And now you know how to check your heating element with an ohms value. So if it turns out that your board is bad, I've got a video on swapping out control boards. If it turns out that your heating element's bad, I'm going to have a video on how to swap out your heating element. Um, if it turns out your fuse is bad, I don't think you need me to show you how to swap out a fuse, but I will say, make sure you put the right size and the right type fuse in there. 
um, this instance it's a, a glass fuse, it's a 5 amp. Okay, so we've come to the end. There was one more thing that this problem could have been that I forgot to mention, and we talked about the lower control board, but it also could have been the upper control board. Um, I'll do another video on how to determine if it is in fact the control board specifically, how to determine if it's the upper control board or if it's a lower control board. Because the lower control board could be fine, it's the upper control board that's not sending the signal down. So I, I do wanna make sure that I throw that in before we forget that. So in review, make sure you have power, make sure your fuse is good, um, make sure you're on electric. Uh, if your board is not sending it out of that relay and you're not getting it on the pins where your heating element connect, then um, you might suspect it's a lower control board. But at that point, before you make that call, we need to review and see is it the upper control board or the lower control board. And we'll get some color codes and figure out is the, you're gonna send a signal up 12 volts, we're gonna try to get it back down 12 volts. Um, we'll get the color codes on that on another video. And, um, or it could be the heating element. And so this was trying to be a big overview on some things that hopefully might help you. So, hey, if this was good, if it added value to you, it helped you understand something, give me a thumb up, really appreciate that. If you like these types of videos where I'm doing service calls and help you understand the systems on your RV, subscribe to our channel because I'm always coming out with new videos. And you can share this with some friends also if they have issues as well and you can fix your own stuff, yeah. So this is Darren signing off and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.